Hi, everybody, and welcome to today's installment of Align's Daily Dose of Advice. It's our way of bringing you valuable insights and thought leadership from business experts from around the world on various topics that will hopefully help you and your business. My name is Eugene Turk. I'm the Vice President of Business Development at Align, and you can always learn more about Align at aligntoday.com. My guest today is Haley Erner. Haley is the UK's very first scaling up certified coach. She has more than 35 years of experience running successful businesses in retail, B2B, and manufacturing. She has spent now the last 14 years as a coach, facilitator, trainer, advisor, speaker, and mentor, logging in more than 12,000 hours of coaching and maintaining more than 150 hours of personal and professional development every year over those past 14 years. She was a global top performing action coach before becoming a Scaling Up Certified Coach and has won multiple awards for her coaching. Haley, it's a pleasure to see you. Thank you for joining us. Eugene, thank you for inviting me. Um, Haley, uh, I know something that you preach with all of your coaching clients is that getting your culture right is one of the most significant leading indicators in a business and the success of that business. And certainly company leaders need to work hard to build a great culture of passion and accountability. Um, but how do you keep it that way with the world obviously changing very rapidly right now and teams working under new conditions without the social connection that previously held them when they were working in a um, shared workspace? So I thought we'd sort of uh, start off the conversation by sort of asking, why is building a culture of accountability so important while teams continue to work from anywhere right now? Okay, so I think probably at the most base fundamental level is uh, the leadership of any company wants to be able to trust their people. And where, you know, trust in itself as a word is a really interesting one because, um, you know, people are now in environments where you know they've never they've never worked in such conditions you know there's people that are homeschooling children there's families in small places there's distraction so you know the whole that whole environment's changed so you know having that strong uh, maintaining that strong culture during this time is like really key you know if we step back and we look in normal times you know, amazing people, you know, we call them A players, you know, fantastic people that fit our culture. They like to work for highly accountable organizations. You know, they are highly self-accountable people. Um, yet, those same people find themselves in an environment that is just not supporting their success so much. And, you know, there's still, you know, there's a lot of stuff still to be got done. So, you know, having and maintaining that accountability is really important. But we have to also understand that the situation's changed, so we maybe have to like behave in a in, in a slightly different way. Um, and you know, one of the things that I've um, realised is that life ordinarily reflects back to us. It's like looking in the mirror, and it's the mirror of uh, it shows us like the things we have done or haven't done, or that we put up with. You know, it gives us that direct reflection. And I think what COVID's done, it's actually put the magnifying glass over us. Mm -hmm. And it's actually exaggerating, exaggerating the great stuff. And it's exaggerating the stuff we were weak at. So, you know, and I think that will also, that also moves with culture. So it makes the, the job of the leader even more important now. Because, you know, the two things I believe, two of the most key things for a leader that are important is, set the vision, set the direction, you know, that's what's going to inspire people. That's what's going to give them the passion. Mm -hmm. You know, why are we in business? You know, why does it make a difference? What's, you know, core purpose. And then it's about making sure that your values as a leader are held. And, you know, that's where, that's where culture stays alive. And that's where, if you as a leader of a company aren't, aren't literally holding people accountable to the values, and I think our internet maybe went a little unstable there again, um, but as a leader, one of your main roles there too is to uphold those values because you, know, you will get what you put up with. 
Yeah, you sort of mentioned some of the different conditions that people are now working under, obviously, uh, with children running around and working from home or working remotely. Uh, how can company leaders sort of uh, maintain team motivation and passion in those employees that are now sort of, you know, remote and working from home? Yeah, I think that's probably, I break that down into two areas, probably. And, and it's something that I heard Vern, said, heard Vern say a while ago, and it really stuck with me. He says, hire motivated people and don't demotivate them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think so there's, there's, I think it's looking at what's demotivating people and what's getting in the way. And, you know, you've already talked about, we've got, we've got people with children, uh, they've got responsibilities. There's, there seems to be no cutoff point between, you know, where does, where does working day end start and where does working day finish? So I think, um, you know, one of the most important things is actually to get down to that human level with people now. It's like more human connection because people are struggling. Mm -hmm. So it's having that um, kind of vulnerability, you know, even as a leader to say, look, this is tough, guys. I struggle. Um, and then, you know, routine sets you free. <laughs> it's something that we, you know, we preach all the time and, you know, something that I've encouraged my clients to look at. So what are the daily routines? You know, what are people doing for their, for their, you know, physical health, their spiritual health, and it's getting more down to that human level. So like on a meeting where you might normally have dived straight into, you know, a business conversation, it's probably taking it down to the human level saying, how are you doing? Yeah. Checking in with everybody. Yep. Yeah, completely. Are you recommending any new strategies to your coaching clients for establishing accountability given these different working conditions? So um, I think, I think um, and, and again, stepping back, I've always believed that accountability has to be a process. And there's two sides to it. There's like um, what I would call the management aspect where you are literally following up and following through when someone's made a commitment to deliver something and get some stuff done. Um, and then there's the other side of it as well. It's like, what's the process? You know, and I think if I look at the scaling up process, for example, we have a process of accountability where we have a long-term vision. We break it down into, you know, three to five years. Then we have a strategy of how we're going to get there. Then we break it down into chunks, you know, 12 months, and then we have our 90 day plans and everybody has those kind of sprints. And I think whilst it's not about it being new, it's about how do we take that into the new world and maybe, you know, again, put that under the magnifying glass and support it with something else. So I am encouraging all of my clients now to use technology where possible, because that's the process side to accountability. You know, you and I ran through your software yesterday because... <laughs> Because for me now, it's absolutely vital that right. people have got some kind of technology to support the accountability process, because that in itself saves management time as well. So, and, and the Utah, I hear, I hear business owners say to me all the time, like, I want my people to own it like I do. And the thing is, the other, the other side to that is, well, you know, do they understand what they're owning? And so one of the newer things that I've started to really push home and encourage people to do is open the books up. You know, um, I don't know, has my internet gone a bit dodgy then? No, we're back. That's okay. That's okay. Um, I think Jack Stack, uh, the great game of business, you know, he opened the books up to people and how can somebody own something? How can they have that feeling if they don't know what they're owning? So that would be probably, you know, Another thing that I've really started to introduce, and I think finally as well, is you know helping people to uh, to be accountable. Like, do they have an organisation system? Um, I remember my oh years ago, my PA she got um, an appendicitis, mm -hmm. and she called in to me and she said, "Haley, she says like I've got to go to hospital," and I had a full client book I'm like man like I've got her job and my job to do and I just remember sitting down I had a little library room in my office and you know sometimes I think your books are your friends and this book looked at me and it was David Allen I'm looking at it, over there uh, getting things done the art of stress-free productivity 
Yeah. And it, it was a life changer for me, that book, because it gave me a personal organization system that allowed me to be accountable. Because with all the goodwill in the world, I can't hold it all in my head. So that's, the, that's another thing that I've really been encouraging people to do to help people have their own accountability systems. Um, you mentioned, obviously, the scaling up methodology and some of the components of that. Those are sort of, maybe you could go into a little more detail about those existing best practices that obviously lots of companies have used to adapt well to maintaining that culture of accountability, both pre-COVID and obviously, I, I would imagine that the methodology works just as well sort of in this new normal that we're now all operating in. Yeah, completely, completely. And I think going back to what I said at the beginning about the magnifying glass and the mirror, it's like, you know, if we can just magnify those little bits now that we need to work on to get stronger, um, it makes all the difference. So just in, it's from a human perspective, again, going back to it, you know, I, I look at um, a game of sport and I think to myself, how motivated would a team of sports people be if the, there was no scoreboard and, and they didn't know who was winning and they didn't know who was losing and they didn't know the rules, but they kept getting, you know, red carded by the, and yellow carded by the referee, but nobody ever told them the rules. So I think going back to it, you know, going back to cult, the culture piece, it's like, keep going back, repeat, you know, repeat the rules, keep banging that culture drum, do work around culture, you know, one of my clients just right now, he's, he's building culture teams. He's like having champions for different core values. And they're looking at how it's working in today's world because they used to look at how it worked in their old world, but it's a little bit different now. Right. So just by actually working on that in itself brings it back to life and fundamentally going back to the score, you know, the, 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 the core values create the rules. They create the way that we behave. But the, but the, you know, knowing the score, that's what keeps the focus. So I like to think everyone needs to know what's to be done in a quarter, what's mm -hmm. to be done in a week, what's to be done every day. I like, it's got to be really simple, like one page, you know, quarter, week, today. And as we were talking yesterday, I have a little real passion around um, making things a to achieve in a day, not a to do. Right. Because to do's make you busy and to achieve's make you really successful. So, Yep, it's great advice. I appreciated that feedback yesterday. So, um, Haley, uh, the question that I ask everyone that comes on the Daily Dose of Advice, what is the number one piece of advice that you are giving your coaching clients right now? I think it's around leadership and what it really means to be the leader. People, people need leadership right now. They need to know that you're out there that you're up front they also need to know that you're real you know that it's, it's okay to be real yeah um but it's about having it's about having that um communication even when you don't know communicate you don't know but be and be honest but you also need to have a bit of a plan as well so well i trained with them and one of his laws of leadership is the law of solid ground. So, you know, it's really difficult as a leader now because the ground's not solid, the ground's moving, yet your right. people for certainty, you know, whilst there isn't certainty in the outside environment, they want some comfort from you that there is a plan. So it really is about start really focusing down on if this scenario plays out, what's the plan? Or if this scenario plays out, what's the plan? It's having two or three different scenarios and by the way that's whether you whether you're booming or really badly affected i believe the same really applies that's great advice Haley. uh always a pleasure talking to you and sort of hearing your wisdom and your insights for those of you that would like to learn more about Haley, you can go to her website at haleyearner.com that's h-a-y-l-e-y-e-r-n-e-r.com um, Haley will also be our June Align Coach webinar presenter, uh, so please join her on June 24th at 10 a.m. Central, uh, 11 a.m. Eastern, 
when she will be discussing today's topic actually about building culture and accountability in much greater detail in a presentation that she has entitled A Leader's Guide to Building a High Performing Culture of Accountability in Today's New World. Again, that's on June 24th. Um, you can find the webinar registration page at aligntoday.com slash webinars. Uh, again, if you would like to learn more about Align, obviously you can go to aligntoday.com and we hope that you will join us next time. Till then, thank you very much and I hope that you make it a great day. Thanks, Haley. Thank you, bye-bye.